Hello everyone and welcome to the 51st episode of the Top 5 Weekly. In this series, each week we look at the most popular workshop creations on Steam. We analyze each one of the submissions, we discover their features and finally test them out here in the world of Stormworks. Now, if you're enjoying these videos, comment below and what else you'd like to see in any of my future videos. While you're there, don't forget that like and subscribe button and make a little bell icon to know if I'm upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So as I said, let's get straight into it and get started with the first creation of this episode. And kicking this episode off with the first creation, we have the Average Art House. Now this is done by a content creator called AP11. As it says in the name, it's meant to be your Average Art House. Now, from what I can see on the screenshots here in the workshop, it's not going to be your average work, uh, average art house. So there's a couple of hidden features in there. So let's go ahead, let's spawn this in, see what it's about and what secret things it has inside it. And spawning in the first creation, you can see this looks like just your normal average toilet. Um, I love the paint blocks along the sides. You can kind of see something's hiding there, some rocket boosters. Um, but yeah, really cool. Love what he's done with these paint blocks. It looks really good. Uh, looks like a proper real life one. Um, we have a door that opens opens up uh, inside here we actually have the toilet uh, as you can see like toilet paper I'm guessing uh, I'm guessing a little sink you can go and close the door we don't have anything to sit on seems like we have some kind of sensor we have an arm and we have a launch okay um, what does this do Hold on, let's see launch ah! okay um, I guess we're very high up in the air <laughs> yeah hold on let me go to photo mode um, oh yes, wow, okay, uh, let's go and unpause that, and you can see we're now dropping down, oh wow, okay, so that seems to be a way to go and launch your, your portaloo up in the air, uh, and it's actually pretty cool that it's gone and landed directly flat and upright where it should be and almost identically where we took off from so that's really cool <laughs> got a little nice little feature in there uh, but yeah i can see this being added into some um some bases and things it's a nice little addition uh so let's go ahead nice one to start this episode off with let's go and move on to the next one and moving on to the next creation of the episode we have the 2000 freightliner this is a creation done by i'm cats really now this looks absolutely stunning. It's meant to be a complete freight liner. It's got all the details in there from what I can see here on the workshop with the pictures. Uh, really cool, nice little starting up procedure. He's got crew control in there. He's got a whole bunch of screens. There's blinkers, there's notifications of sound. There's all kinds of things. It looks really incredible with all the different features it has inside there. So let's go ahead, let's spawn this in and see how it works here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the next creation, you can see this truck looks incredible. Really, really nice. I think I've only seen one of the trucks that looks this great. Um, but yeah, absolutely. The amount of detail that I can see just from here uh, looks absolutely incredible. You can see start off, there's tons of paint blocks here in the front. Um, the size looks really good. The stance is good. Uh, going around, we seem to have some mirrors with uh, looks like a monitor and a camera at the top there. A way to get into the cab. We'll go to that just now. It seems like he's used some wing pieces here in the front to get that nice curve. I'm um, guessing he might be able to update that with uh, the new blocks that we have in game. Uh, along with that, we actually have the main cab here. It seems like an electrical connector. We have the exhaust system that goes out there on the side. Some gearboxes and things. And then we have ping pin okay we actually have the trailer itself which is the supports okay so you can go and up and low the supports there that's quite nice uh, all these are paint blocks going around the side here moving on to the back uh, once again more paint blocks we seem to have a uh, unlocked for the doors okay so he's gone and used a whole bunch of gyros in there uh, looks really cool in there I wonder if there's a way to climb up if you can use a handle or something. I didn't see any handles, so I don't know exactly how you would get up in there. Um, but I'm guessing obviously you can just use a forklift to get some cargo and stuff in there. It's gonna close those doors. That's really cool. Going along, we seem to just have exactly the same on the other side. Um, seems like oh there's a refueling connector there, and then just the actual way to get in there. Let's go and open up the doors. So we have the main area here, seems like door. We have a speaker on the side. Let's go and get into the passenger seat. Uh, in the passenger seat, we seem to have, I guess we have two beds. In here, we have a TV with a DVD sign and it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, a, what's this for? It's the time, okay. Um, we have some lights and upper lights. 
seems like a little radio there that's pretty cool uh, the passenger seat and then the actual main driving seat just over here now getting to the driving seat uh, we have a screen okay so it's battery engine rpm and fuel uh, next is camera map and back onto the same screen custom speed hold we have a toggle to talk a mute a frequency driver's lights passenger's light interior lights okay and going here we have disable trailer air supply parking brake disable inter axle differential door locker oh nice uh, sound notifications auto blinkers why not high speed safety steering cool lane hold assist okay and cruise control wow blinkers ignition horn and beam okay oh, that's cool toggles between them it's going to get the ignition on just like that nothing else we have to do actually um i think we can just go forward can't we that is nice and quick that's really cool and we have our little oh that's that's cool okay let's slow down here let's turn oh, wow that's very stable you can see that i'm going to pushing a full throttle and turning and nothing oh that is really good look how stable that is that is really good braking is nice i love the suspension use in the front oh yeah that is really cool drives very well very realistic i love how it's how the suspension is acting there when we turn let's go off road here a bit yeah that's a beautiful truck, absolutely gorgeous. Drives well, handles well, auto shift, oh, that's all good. Speed hold, I wonder how the speed hold works. Um, so it says, set to zero to disable maximum speed 160. Okay, let's do 50. Is there a, a cruise control I saw there? And now it's just gonna drive at that speed. Yeah, awesome. That is really cool. Let's go and just disable that. Oh, it's a quicker way to disable that. Um, but, oh yeah, that is awesome. High speed safety steering. Okay, so now I think I can get a little bit more steering out of it. Oh, really cool truck. Let's go ahead, let's move on to the next one of the episode. And moving on to the next creation of the episode, we have the Humber L9 multi-purpose VTOL aircraft. This is done by a content creator called Logs. You know his work already on the workshop. Now we've already checked out one of these versions of uh, these aircrafts already. However, this is the new version. It's L9, there's a couple different ones. This is meant to be the large multi-purpose VTOL. Uh, pretty easy to use and also very reliable. There's about a top speed, about 280 knots with boost engines on it. Seems pretty cool. There's a whole bunch of nice things in there of course just like the old one or the first version that we've seen there's interactive maps there's beds there's refueling equipment there's cargo areas there's winches there's radio stuff there's screens everything in there what we're used to expect so let's go ahead let's spawn this in and see how it works here in the world of stormworks and spawning in the next creation you can see this thing is massive much bigger than the other version we have checked out already. Now here in the front, obviously we can see the cockpit. Uh, it seems like a laser sensor and we also have a camera. Um, we'll come to the cockpit later, but going around, oh man, this thing looks gorgeous and he's definitely gone and used a lot of the new wedges. A whole bunch of paint blocks just over there uh, with the hub row there. We have some jet engine intakes here on the side and seems like just up there and over there, exactly the same on the other side. Uh, underneath it, we have the landing gear like we're used to. Uh, love the attention to detail, spotlights, paint blocks underneath, um, oh, lots of things going on. Seems like just here on the side, we have some type of door. Uh, we then have, looks like a cargo ramp here at the back, uh, some lights and things, the exhaust here at the back. Oh, this thing is awesome. It does chug a little bit, but it seems to be running fine here on my computer. Uh, let's go and let's see if we can get in. Landing gear seems like it retracts everything nice. Let's go and get in the door here. So opening up, we seem to have a ramp with, uh, that's nice, a little bit of a railing system so we don't fall out. Just jump up here and we can go and, oops, that's, that's a ramp. Let's go and close that door. Uh, we have the cargo bay, very nice cargo bay lots of detail here tons of parachutes seats winches looks like all kinds of gear up there we have a winch system just over here going along it looks like a set open hatch where does that go 
let's see. Uh, okay, so there's another whole area, so we'll check that in a couple minutes. Uh, we have another ramp on the sides there, and we have the back ramp, which you can go and open. We have all the rails on the floor, so you have you can load any car type of cargo you want uh, in there. Love the flashing lights. That's nice. Let's go and close that. And let's go see what's upstairs. So going up into the next level here. So, oops, if I don't fall down. Let's go and control and then jump. Okay. Uh, it seems like we have some seating areas. Nice to yield once again. Some more seating. Medical beds. Another way to get up. Uh, oh, emergency exit. So that's to get to the top with his logo there, quite nice. Okay, let's go and get down, let's close that door. Uh, some more seating areas, seems like a nice little kitchen. Okay, those don't work, I'm guessing there's a power switch somewhere. Uh, what do we have, cabin door? Okay, so a nice little cabin with some beds in it and another cabin with some beds in it. Okay, very nice, so there's a lot of detail, pretty much everything you need in here. Let's go and carry on and what do we have in here? So it seems like a, what is in here? It seems like a toilet with a shower. Okay, nice. Okay, what else? Let's go and close that. Is this another toilet? Yes, so another toilet identical on this side. Let's go and turn our lights off. Let's move down. So we're back into the main area. Let's go and see. So we have the cockpit down there, which we'll come to in a few minutes. We have another door. Uh, it seems like just like a control room of some sort, just to watch some TV screens and things. Okay. Let's carry on and it seems like we have another hatch. Okay, so that's a harness hatch. So you can go and open that up. I think we need power. Uh, let's go and get into this main control room here. Let's close the door. So some parachutes, a ton of screens left and right. Uh, we also have some controls and some more controls and big screens. So let's go and if I'm correct, we have to get main power on, engine power and cockpit power. And oh my word. Once again, he's got tons of screens everywhere. It looks absolutely incredible in here. Now, if I'm correct, that power is on now, which means we should be able to use yep, the harness hatches and things to open up. Everything can now work as expected. Uh, what's this? Hold on. I haven't seen this yet. Roof winch mags. Okay. Uh, let's go back into the cockpit here. So all our screens. Let's go into the pilot seat here. We seem to have left side door. Okay, so these are all doors to open them up if you want. Uh, you have, what else? Stabilizing, disable, push to talk, lifting strength, landing gear, hold speed, ground brake, uh, change screen. Okay, so you can change these screens here to radar and then stuff. Okay, disable auto evasion, booster engines, VTOL engines, push to talk, altitude hold, autopilot, mute alarms, heaters, winch mags all, okay, front lights, flood lights, altitude hold, autopilot, okay, cool, so there's all these kind of nice things here, let's go, I think we have to get VTOL engines on and we have to wait, I'm just going to lower the volume here, and let's just wait for this to boost up, and you can see the engine's gone, we have to wait for this adjusting engines to turn on stable, if I'm correct, And just going on the outside here, you can see everything firing up. Very cool. Very, very nice. We have some um, hotkeys, roll, throttle, yaw, up, down, landing gear, full speed, disable. A couple of cool things there. Uh, it seems like our engines are stable now, so we should be able to just increase our altitude. Let's just, Actually, let's test out the set altitude. Let's go with 100. And I think we need to go and choose the altitude on. We should be increasing. Yep, just like that. You can see. Oh, that's awesome. We're going up. And let's test the autopilots. Just like we did with the old one. And let's put our autopilot on. So maybe we want to increase our altitude here. Just about 200. Make sure we don't hit those mountains. And let's go and turn the autopilot on. Oh, that is awesome. Look at that. Landing gear will get rid of it also. Very nice. This thing's awesome. Very big, very stable. All these different cool controls that we can actually go and check on. And we can do, we can even put the booster engines on, which increases the RPS even more. Well, we don't want to do that. Um, we can change our screens. 
hold full speed. Okay, now we don't want to mute alarms. We don't have any alarms going off yet, so we're fine with that. I said we can change the screen here. So now we have the camera, we can do up and down. Zoom in, zoom out. Nice, IR mode if we need to. Let's go, what's the next screen? We had the radar, so range, up, down, resets. Nice, so we can obviously check for things. We pretty much have everything we want. Um, this seems like a little screen that's telling us where we started to where we are. Oh no, that's just telling us where, oh, that's telling us where, how far we are from our, our target where we set our autopilot to. Okay, and now you can see we're at the target area, getting to the location, very, very nice. Yeah, so lovely creation, obviously very similar to his other VTOLs that he's done already, but nice refresh on what he has. Um, absolutely gorgeous creation. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the next one of the episode. And moving on to the next creation of the episode, we have the NJ MH60 Seahawk. Yes, this is a creation done by myself. It's been in the top five for a while now. As it says in the name, it's meant to be a version of the MH60 Seahawk uh, twin turbo shaft engine. Along with that, uh, it's meant to have a folding rotor and also a ta folding tail rotor. So it's nice and compact for storage on any vessels. Uh, so it can go in hangars or on flight decks and so on and so forth. Uh, I've done it out with quite a few features, just like we had with the chin hook. Uh, so we'll go over them, show you all about, obviously also cover how to fly it, which would be quite cool. Uh, and I can just pretty much talk to you about it. So let's go ahead, let's spawn this in and see how it works here in the world of Stormix. And spawning in the next creation, you can see here we have the Seahawk helicopter. Now, very similar in terms of specs that we had on the Chinook. Uh, this has obviously just been modified to actually suit this helicopter instead. Now, the biggest features that uh, I found that I really liked about this helicopter when I was building it is the use of the new wedges. Obviously with the new wedges you can get these beautiful designs uh, throughout your helicopters now and the biggest challenge and I think we discussed this before in one of the other videos was getting the back here uh, to look as it should uh, so that was obviously achievable using the new wedges going along there so which is really cool uh, there's a couple other cool features moving along we obviously have our doors here on the sides for the cockpit uh, going along we have just some side windows where you could obviously go and sit from uh, the main actual interior which we'll come to in a couple minutes uh, siding doors on both sides that you can obviously open and close as you feel fit uh, if you do have them open it does give you access to the service hatch uh, so you can see here we have batteries we have recharging refueling uh, we can see how much fuel we have in percentage which is quite nice going along uh, there's some areas here for the upcoming flares that we'll be getting very shortly uh, so we're going putting them there when they do come out so the tail rotor uh, nothing special in terms of the tail rotor over here I did say that we will have a folding version uh, so I have got a folding version it will be released very shortly uh, so that will be updated which is quite nice in the meantime we do have a failed folding tail rotor itself and you can also go and fold the main rotor just by jumping up and pressing E on top of it and you can see here now the main rotor has been folded uh, which allows obviously for nice storage on decks so let's go and open that uh, along the side here we have uh, just a drop tank or drop here where we can drop our this is meant to be, I think, of sonar of some sort. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm not an expert in helicopters and what features they have. Um, along with that is we have another sliding door and there's also another service hatch here on the side that you can go and open exactly the same as the other side. Uh, going and opening up the door again, we have our winch system with a light camera and a mag uh, and another door on the other side. Underneath the helicopter, a couple of different instruments and things. You'll see in a couple of minutes what those are used for and the camera itself. Now, going into the actual area of the helicopter in the back here we can see we have the seating just like we would in a proper helicopter uh, we have a whole bunch of seating so there's nine plus two here on the sides uh, i wanted to use a whole bunch of paint blocks on the floor just to make it as detailed and realistic as possible uh, and then along with that we also have the ceiling which has got a whole bunch of different equipment depending on where you are in the world so you can obviously use this uh, we also have on the side here just a winch system to go and use that uh, we do need power to, to activate that so you can just activate by putting the main power on and you can see now we have our winch camera here I'll turn my light off uh, you can put the winch light on you can use the mag connector you can up and down it as much as you want to and you can also close the door uh, which is quite nice uh, going on let's go to the main pilot seat now just like the Chinook uh, you can either fly it from this left seat or you can jump to the right hand seat and you can use the uh, flip switch here to now control it from this side we have, uh, just jumping into back to the pilot seat, a whole bunch of controls and screens. 
exactly the same like the Chinook here, uh, we have our landing lights going on either side. So you can see we enable those. We have our two landing lights that face downwards, uh, which is quite nice. We also have our taxi lights, which is just going to be in front of the helicopter just over here for taxi operations if we need to. We also have our beacon light, navigation lights and strobe lights uh, that you can go and turn on. So those are all the lights. Uh, realistic as in real life, all the flashing lights as we want, double blink, etc. Our main power, you can see my battery is going down. So I'm going to get the engine on. Uh, it's on 10 at the moment, don't have to do anything, just get the starter on on both sides. So we'll leave that in for a couple minutes. Uh, we also have Sheepstock Marine Radio with this channels, pressed down, everything like that. Uh, going down into this area over here, we do have interior lights which we can go and turn on from either side. As you can see we have the green, uh, we can switch, it's going to go to white now and we can switch it again and we'll go to red. A very dull light, I wanted a very dull light here. Um, along with that is screens. We have our artificial horizons both on our heads up displays and on these screens. We also have our maps uh, so we can go in and out on the maps. I will link obviously all these screens in the, in the workshop page, uh, navigation, so on and so forth. We can also switch to our nose camera. Uh, so the nose camera then obviously disables controls on the actual helicopter and then you can obviously just go and turn using left and right and so on and so forth. Uh, enable IR camera if you want to also. Uh, along with that, we have a couple more instruments here, uh, a little bit of our throttle there, and we also have our spotlight hook uh, lifting system. So underneath the helicopter there is a lifting area uh, with a light. You can also go enable the actual hook itself. Uh, we have interior lights, which we've already spoken about, and we have this main screen down here. Once again, PFD, it's linked in the workshop. You can go click on it, look at different engine stuff. You can change the screen. Go look at our uh, fuel on left and right hand side and you can go and look at the generator and the battery stuff. Uh, so pretty cool, love to use that in my helicopters. Uh, we also have our parking brakes and auto land systems, I can turn the parking brakes off. Uh, autopilot, auto hover and our increased altitude in feet here. So you can see currently we're at 17 feet, we can go and increase it all the way up to let's go like 300. Uh, we'll test that out in a couple of minutes. And autopilot, we'll go and use the same autopilot coordinates that we had for the VTOL. Uh, and then actually flying the helicopter, pretty easy. You can use obviously the normal controls just to fly however you want to. Uh, it handles quite well, as you can see here. Uh, quite nice and agile pretty much works as intended. Um, it is got a little bit of a slant towards the rear. The rear is a little back heavy. Uh, I did design it that way so that when you are using the autopilot, it actually is completely level. Uh, so you'll see that in a couple secs here. So if we go and enable our auto hover, you will see it's gonna go and raise up to the correct altitude. So you can see 322 and we're on 322 in a couple seconds. So you can see the helicopter is just going and floating at that. It actually doesn't move forward or backwards. It does stay very st steady or where it is. Let's go and test the autopilot. So once again, just go and activate the autopilot. Helicopter will now turn and you can see now it's just going at an angle and it's going and flying. Now, I've used the same autopilot system I've used before. Uh, using the thrusters, it does get to a nice top speed, about 138, you can see here it is nice and quick. Uh, so if you are using it for missions and things, it is really nice. Uh, I'm gonna go and change the location here to the main airstrip. And you'll see here, I have, what you do have to just realize with this is you need to disable the autopilot, go and put in the new coordinates, wait for it to slow down just a little bit. You can see here, we're dropping speed and re it again. It will now go and turn itself and it's going to position ourselves straight towards there and just like the chinook it does have an auto land feature so we'll be testing it out um but yeah put a lot of effort into this one uh there's a lot of obviously custom obviously the blocks here a lot of the wedges that we use uh there's a lot of a lot of hidden logic uh, that's been hidden along in the engine areas um, but it's pretty much got everything you need obviously with flying with autopilot stuff you can go and disable um, and change anything you want to we can go and open the doors here if we want to you can see out uh, so it's absolutely incredible there uh, we can go and jump back into our pilot seat and you can see there test out the camera for example you can see now we can go and increase the zoom if we want to okay and actually just go and check out the island here uh, up to you on obviously how you want to use that so pretty cool um, you can see now we're coming into the area here the helicopter is going to start slowing down as it normally would do and we'll start banking towards the back yep and you should see we should be ending up on our spot here 
and we can go and use the auto land if we want to so we can go and drop the auto land on if you want to you can also disable the actual autopilot completely up to you and the helicopter is pretty much just going to go now and try and land itself with obviously the landing lights you can see they're pretty cool uh, if you want to obviously change its direction while you're auto landing you could uh, it's completely up to you here i can disable controls here you can see also the back and the helicopter will now go and land by itself quite nice touching down the back and then touching down the front and it will stay there uh, we can go and obviously go and do missions and things like that that's the whole point of that uh, was to do missions uh, and to carry on and work around it as I said underneath the helicopter there is a lifting mag and camera and so on and so forth uh, that is quite cool because if you switch to it and I'll show you in a couple of secs here uh, if you want to actually do the lifting hook you'll see that it switches and it also switches that screen uh, so if I take off the order land here and just go back up you can see we now have a screen where we can go and lift things and that's underneath there uh, you can see we can go and lift things from there which is pretty cool uh, and yeah that's pretty much about it I hope you guys have been enjoying this helicopter uh, and it's nice obviously it's better on the top five uh, I thought this I'll actually include it this time usually I don't uh, but it's a quite nice little helicopter there as I said earlier there are some more versions coming out uh, especially the one with the folding tail rotor uh, and there's a couple of different other extra cool features on there including pylons and things that I will be releasing soon so let's go ahead and let's move on to the last creation of the episode and moving on to the last creation of the episode we have the dirt runway airport this is done by Billy now this, as it says in the name, once again, it's meant to be a runway. It's built on dirt. It's got a couple of few different features to it. It's got two hangars, a clubhouse, a small ATC tower. There's also a, of course, the dirt runway. Uh, there's a plane parking area on there. There's lights, there's pylons, there's uh, a ground watering pump for firefighting, all kinds of different things. He's got all cool things with us. So let's go ahead, let's spawn this in and see how it works here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the next creation, I've used a environmental mod to get this in here. Now, this is a first. I don't think anyone else has actually created an airstrip before. Um, so it's really nice to see this. It's a really lovely, nice, lots of detail on there. We have our wind uh, readings here. We seem to have some landing lights, so it's red at the moment. There seems to be another one on the other side. Uh, along with that, we have a little control tower, uh, which looks pretty cool. Seems like we have, once again, some wind equipment just over here going in. Can we get into the ATC tower? Yes, we can. So you just into here, we seem to have, what do we have in here? So some books and things, looks like some monitors, just a couple things in there. Uh, going into the tower itself, uh, looks like a little sink. We have some more screens. We have, oh, this is, oh, that's lights. Okay, that's pretty cool. So you can go and control the lights just there. Uh, we have on off. So it seems like a radar. That radar looks very familiar. <laughs> uh, really cool. And it seems like it's detecting things, which is quite nice. Increase, decrease distance. Uh, landing lights positive. Uh, negative not too sure I'm guessing it changes those okay so and we have a little radio so that's oh you can actually talk out this oh, that's pretty cool okay and moving down let's go out of there so that's the control tower we seem to have some fuel stations okay so this looks like a fire extinguisher system okay so if there's any fires you can do that it's quite nice we have our jet fuel our diesel fuel very nice and actually the hangers themselves now i'm not too sure how you open the hangers when there's a door on some sides or control points somewhere okay there we go so we have a door on this side so we can go and open the door and then i'm guessing yep in here we have a unlock the lights as we did before and open doors like how that's opening that's very cool nice very smooth and then yeah you can go and store your plane in here uh we have just a couple details love how he's done obviously use the wages here to create this hanger style really quite nice uh going along seems like we have another hanger just over here exactly the same and then we have the clubhouse um the clubhouse outside we have the pool table uh awesome we also have i'm guessing just as a work in progress ping pong table uh, we've seen the pool table before on all the top fives already going into the clubhouse let's go and walk in do we have a light box somewhere i didn't see one okay uh so we have a dining room table a nice little kitchen there burners nice seem to have a clock great some medical stuff fridge uh some more detailed stuff oh, there's the lights there oh that's very bright 
We have a door. Okay, we have to go to the other side and open the door. Uh, what do we have? So we have some crew quarters or some cabin in there for someone to sleep. And let's go and check the other side. And I'll toilet with the dishwasher. Uh, it looks like a teddy bear in there. Very nice. Uh, let's go and close that off. We have to have upstairs area. Okay, so upstairs we have some bedding. And yeah, that's that's about it. Very nice. I don't see anything else outside that I missed. I uh, don't think so. No, that's just the clubhouse. Okay, so yeah, really cool, really cool creations. We've got everything you need. Once again, the landing lights. Uh, I'm guessing he also said he had some planes, which he's releasing quite soon uh, to the workshop, which is really nice. But I love to see these environments and mods. Uh, pretty much anyone can go and create their own worlds here in Stormworks. And as you can see, we have our own airstrip here. Uh, the only thing I'd love to see from developers moving forward is maybe some custom build areas. Uh, it would be lovely to obviously see that if devs could uh we could obviously go and add our own build area here and we could build on this hangar that would then obviously change things how we work on the environmental mods and then people could make their own bases uh so that would be a really cool thing to see in the future but i love what he's done and done on this creation uh looks absolutely incredible uh and definitely want to see this obviously in some future videos and see people using it uh to obviously fly around and store their things here which is absolutely awesome so i think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.